I just don't know if I like how I look in hats. Do I? I don't know. Whatever. Let's get started. Uh, I don't want to wash my hair today, so I'm, I'm wearing a hat. And I like wearing hats when I'm outside, but I don't know. I f I'm inside and it feels silly. Whatever. I'm, we're just going to do it. So let's get started. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Rachel and I am knitting. Not right now, but most of the time. <sighs> it's time for part three part three of the Irish Knitting Tour recap. If you haven't yet watched parts one and two, I'll link those up above for you. Uh, it might be helpful for you to watch those if you're interested in a chronological recap of the Irish Knitting Tour. In part one, I go through what we did leading up to the tour through, I believe, day three of the tour. And in part two, I go over days four and five of the tour. So now we're at part three. We can pick up where we left off beginning on day six. When I had the YouTube video in mind that I would make for this trip, I never imagined that there would be three of them. I still don't even know if this will end up being the last one. There might be a part four. I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out how far we get today together. But uh, yeah, I never imagined that this would be what would happen. But there's just so much uh, information to relay to you. So many cool things that we got to do and got to experience and that we learned and that we saw and that it was just amazing. It was an amazing, amazing experience. I'll never forget it for the rest of my life. Uh, it was incredible. So all that to say, even though I didn't expect to have so many recap videos, uh, it totally makes sense now that I know what the tour was like. There's just, it's just like a wealth of information that I want to share with you and help you experience through your screen. Also, uh, for those who were on the tour, I want these videos to be something that you can look back on whenever you get that, you know, all oh, that heartache for Ireland. You can watch these videos and remember the wonderful times we had together. Um, I've, sorry, I've rewatched parts one and two like five times each by this point, just because it, they make me so happy. They make me so happy and uh, getting to relive that wonderful time with everyone is, it just, I don't know, makes me really happy. So anyway, don't feel weird if you rewatch these because uh, I myself have been doing that. Sorry, uh, but let's get started without further ado. So for part two, I left off ending day five of the tour. That was Friday the 13th. Ooh. So uh, that's where we left off. And now we're ready to pick up on day six of the tour, Saturday, October 14th. Now, as I mentioned at the end of part two, we've just arrived at the Lake Hotel. This is a great hotel in Killarney. Ireland and it's just a beautiful property. It sits right on the shore of a lake. There are castle ruins. There's expansive grounds. It's really close to the city of Killarney. It's close to Muckross House which we visited the day prior. So uh, it's, it's a great location and really really beautiful. So we start day six Saturday October 14th at the Lake Hotel. Breakfast is served from 7.30 onward, so that's how we started the day. Breakfast is nice because it's not like a set time. You don't have to be there at 7.30. You can kind of go as you please in that breakfast serving window. Um, I always wanted to get there right away because I love breakfast and I didn't want to miss a minute of fun on the knitting tour. So uh, DJ and I went at 7.30, I think most days that we were at the Lake Hotel for breakfast. And I'll show you footage of the breakfast room at the Lake Hotel. It's just a stunning, stunning room. This is the same room we had our included dinner on, on the night of um, Friday the 13th, day five of the tour. And this is where breakfast is served daily as well. Something that we learned as we were going from these various hotels throughout Ireland is there are a lot of items that are uh, common, like 
uh, of course, each hotel would have the full Irish breakfast, but they would have their own spin on it. For instance, some hotels would have scrambled eggs. Many hotels would have fried eggs. eggs. Some hotels would have both. Some hotels had quiches. Some hotels had French toast. So there was kind of a, a balance of consistent items we knew we could expect. And then also some fun surprises that varied from hotel to hotel. One surprise at the Lake Hotel breakfast was this like water refreshment bar and they had cute little signs next to the water saying what each additive to that water was good for so things like strawberry basil and I think citrus things like that um but I really really liked the lake hotel breakfast I didn't order anything off the menu because again I just like I just didn't really realize that was a thing I could do I did always order my own little coffee pot and then I usually just stuck to the hot breakfast bar and the um, like yogurt and fruit area. I never ordered off the menu, but uh, the Lake Hotel breakfast was delicious. They had these really, um, really good, I think they were smoked salmon quiches that I got each morning we were there and their breakfast potatoes. Oh my gosh, their breakfast potatoes were so good. They had um, this herb seasoning on them. If you are from the Pacific Northwest of the United States or you've been to the Pacific Northwest and you've eaten at a McMinimins restaurant, you may be familiar with Cajun tots. Um, the seasoning to me smelled like the seasoning on Cajun tots. It didn't really taste too much like that, I think because there wasn't as much of it as there would have been on Cajun tots, but it was so good. Oh my gosh, the breakfast potatoes at the Lake Hotel were peak breakfast potatoes for me. I was I was in heaven. Uh, and then another really nice thing about the Lake Hotel breakfast room is that there's this wall of windows that face the lake. So you have this unbeatable view of the lake that the Lake Hotel sits on. You can see the castle ruins. One day during breakfast, I saw Leslie in the castle ruins taking pictures and I took a picture of her while she was taking a picture and she was easy to spot because of her bright pink hat, um, uh, which you may already know about if you follow Leslie. It's an iconic <laughs> bright pink Oslo hat. Um, but uh, yeah, I could go on and on about the breakfast at the Lake Hotel. The long and short of it is uh, immaculate. I loved it. So we had our breakfast. Now, uh, Saturday, day six of the tour, this is a very busy day. There are a lot of things planned. And these are things that are for the knitting participants and the non-knitting participants alike. We were basically gone most of the day. So uh, we got on the coach at a little before nine and we headed to Carrie Woolen Mills. So earlier in this series, in part one, I told you about Cushendale Woolen Mills, and I mentioned that this is one of two remaining working mills in Ireland. Carrie Woolen Mills is the second. Carrie Woolen Mills was very cool because we got to tour the mill as it was working. With Cushendale, not all of the machines were in use as we were touring. So we had the benefit of hearing the, you know, narrative, the tour guides information and see the machines in the background, even though not all of them were in operation during the tour. Whereas at Carrie Woolen Mills, some of the machines we did not get to see in action at Cushendale, we got to see in action at Carrie Woolen Mills. So that was really cool. Now, the disadvantage of that is the noise of those machines. So since they were on, to be honest with you, I didn't really hear <laughs> almost anything that um, the woman giving us a tour um, told us, at least during the portion of the tour that we were in the rooms with those machines. There were some parts of the tour where we were outside or we went to um, storage buildings and we saw um, fabrics and stuff. Of course, that was quiet and I could hear whatever um, wisdom she was imparting to us. But when we were doing the factory portion of the tour, I couldn't really hear that much. So I was glad that we had gone to Cushendale first because I had that foundational knowledge of what these machines are, what they're doing, what they're accomplishing. And then at Carrie Woolen Mills, I didn't get to hear that narration, but I got to see what it looks like when those machines are in action. So I think that was a good balance. 
it was really cool to see the yarn that was being processed or I shouldn't even say yarn because it wasn't quite yarn yet um, at the first leg of the tour we got to see um, the carding machine work all of these um, uh, fibers together that would eventually be made into yarn. That was really cool. We also got to see the weaving process and how the um, items that they sell in their storefront look when they are on the weaving machines, how that works. Um, that was really cool. I really enjoyed the Carrie Woolen Mills visit. Uh, we were separated into two groups uh, because our our group was so large. So we were separated into two groups. One of the Carrie Woolen Mills employees took half the group um, uh, on the tour starting in one direction and another Carrie Woolen Mills employee took the second tour group, the group I was in, starting from the opposite direction. So we both got the same tour but kind of um, the inverse of each other. And then at the end of our tour we ended up at the marketplace or the gift shop or the storefront area of the property. This was really nice. <laughs> really, really nice. Now, a lot of us had already done our research. We had already been scouring the Carrie Woolen Mills website. So we knew what yarn we wanted, what colors we wanted. I knew that I wanted green fleck and a purple yarn. Now, as I've mentioned before in this Irish Knitting Tour recap series, I had heard or read rather some kind of scary reviews about the Carrie Woolen Mills yarn on Ravelry. People saying it's really rustic, it's way too scratchy, it uh, uh, rubs the finishing off their needles, things like that. But once I had felt the skeins at a sweater shop in Dublin, I was confident that I could move forward purchasing a sweater quantity or two. So that was my plan when I went to Carrie Woolen Mills. And the price is incredible. So the Carrie Woolen Mills hanks of yarn with tax is 15.50 in euros, 15.50 euros uh, for a 200 gram hank. That's an incredible value. So I'm all about that. So I knew that I was gonna invest in it. Now, since I had my yarn shipped home, my price was lower because I didn't have the vat included. So I think my skeins were 12 euros and 20 cents for 200 grams. Come on, come on people, you can't beat that. So I knew that I was going to be investing in yarn at Carrie Woolen Mills. It was kind of a chaotic, experience to find the yarn that we wanted because even though there was a wall of yarn the uh, yarn is not the main event in the gift shop I learned there's blankets there's sweaters there's wool wash there's all sorts of things and yarn is just a piece of it so a lot of us were able to kind of flock to the yarn area I think everyone got the colors they wanted and if there were uh colors that we wanted more of they could go to the back and look for the specific dye lot we needed so some of us took advantage of that and I'll show you what I got this bag has 10 hanks of Carrie Woolen Mills Irish wool. Um, the story of this bag is when I was still on the Irish knitting tour, I posted in the Treehouse Knits Discord and I asked for yarn storage solutions because I knew that when I brought all the yarn I was getting on the Irish knitting tour and I brought it home, where was I going to put it? It wasn't all going to fit in my cedar chest. This is full of yarn. It wasn't all going to fit in my yarn wall. Uh, it wasn't going to fit in the other nooks and crannies that I keep yarn in. And I wanted it to be safe from insects and the like. So anyway, I posted in the Treehouse Knits Discord. I said, please help me. What uh, are your recommendations? And Andrea, of, I think, is her handle Mystical Crochet? I'll put it, I'll put it here. Um, she commented about these vinyl bags on Amazon and she gave me the link. I'll put a link in the description box. They're incredible. Like I said, this has 10 skeins or 10 hanks of 
Carrie Woolen Mills yarn, and each hank is 200 grams. So this is a lot of yarn in here. That's the equivalent of like 20 of these skeins on my yarn wall. And honestly, I could stuff more in here. So my plan is to put some um, like good smelling uh, sachets in here to further protect the yarn. But I'm really pleased with this purchase. I bought like uh, uh, like four more packs. I think they come in packs of two or four, but, but they're great. Um, definitely check them out if you're looking for yarn storage. Um, but all that to say, I got five skeins of this colorway. This is called Green Fleck, and it's basically this dark forest green base, and it has tweedy bits in it that are colorful. So how gorgeous is that? How gorgeous is that? I think um, a cozy sweater vest is in order for this. So this is 100% uh, pure new wool. And this is what the label looks like. Erin Wool from Carrie Woolen Mills. So I got five skeins of green fleck for a sweater vest. I'm thinking like an open vest with buttons and cables. So if you have a pattern that you know of that would work for worsted or air and weight wool, um, let me know because that's what I want to turn that into. And then I also got, mm, these smell like Ireland. <laughs> I miss it. Okay, focus. I also got five skeins of this really beautiful color. Now, when I went on the website and did my research, I knew, of course, I wanted green fleck and I knew I wanted a purple, but I didn't know which purple. Sam of Beachy Breeze Fibers had pulled a few skeins of this aside from the yarn wall at Carrie Woolen Mills, and I was like, yep, that's the one. That is the one I need. There weren't that many hanks left, so I asked um, the good people at Carrie Woolen Mills to go in the back, uh, like they had offered, to look for more uh, hanks matching that dye lot. They couldn't find any, but they did find a whole bag full of a different dye lot. So I've got five skeins of this. Uh, the colorway is Bilberry. How cute is that? So I've got 100% pure new wool. Aaron Wool from Carrie Woolen Mills in Green Fleck and Bilberry. And my plan for the Bilberry yarn is to make a cardigan. I have swatched for the visiting cardigan, uh, and that's like a really cute, pretty texture with, I don't, what is it called? Is it broken rib or mock rib or something where the rib is like a little little fancy, a little more textured than classic one by one rib. Uh, basically, you uh, don't do one by one rib every row. You do something special. I don't know. It was a while ago that I swatched for this. I swatched for it like when I was home and still like uh, tired and kind of sick. So I don't really remember fully. I have the swatch that I'll show you later in this video. But yes, I'm going to be baking the visiting cardigan in bilberry and a cabled button-up vest in green fleck. So again, I covet your pattern recommendations. I used to say I covet your prayers, but now I covet your pattern recommendations. So let me know in the comments what you think would be a good pattern for my green fleck yarn. Um, that's not all that I purchased at Carrie Woolen Mills. I also got, now this wasn't in the plan, I want you to know, okay? But I did also purchase three skeins of this merino wool. Now, on the tour, we learned that merino wool is not Irish wool. There are no merino uh, sheep in Ireland. So if it says merino, it's not Irish, which is fine. Like I have a ton of merino wool, but on an Irish knitting tour, I was kind of focused on purchasing Irish wool. So I deviated a little bit here, but I did buy it from a family owned business in Ireland. Uh, but this is superwash merino wool and it's purple. As you can see, it's a stunning, stunning deep purple. Um, this is called purple iris. 
and it is also 200 grams. This I figured out is I think a sport weight. Yes, sport weight. Uh, it's about 660 yards for 200 grams. So yeah, like a sport weight. I'm thinking of making the fall line sweater, I believe it's called. And the reason for that is because Faith, one of the tour participants, basically every day when I looked at Faith, I thought, mm -hmm, that's what I want to look like. That's what I want to wear. Can she please style me? So this was true of her uh, regular clothes and her hand knits. So I'm still waiting on that list, Faith, of uh, itemized things that I can make and itemized things that I can purchase so I can go out my door and look like Faith. Okay. So uh, anyway, Faith wore this gorgeous green fall line sweater um, that day, actually, while we were at Carrie Woolen Mills. And I was like, yep, I need to have that. This would be the perfect yarn for it. So I got it. I think this was, I want to say somewhere around 16 euros for 200 grams. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. So I got three skeins of that. I did keep these three skeins with me. I did not ship them back. So the only things that I had Carrie Woolen Mills shipped were my green flex skeins and my bilberry skeins and then the purple iris skeins and the additional carry woolen mill souvenirs i'll show you now i kept with me in my suitcase and took with me back home myself so this vinyl bag is kind of full of souvenirs and i've slowly been emptying it emptying it as i walk you through the knitting tour uh, but there's still lots of treasures in here that I need to go over with you. So I got a magnet at Carrie Woolen Mills. Uh, DJ had been buying magnets throughout the trip, every city we went to for our fridge and also for his parents' fridge. And I was like, yeah, I want, I want a magnet. So I got a Carrie Woolen Mills magnet. And also at Carrie Woolen Mills, I got a bar of soap. This is wool fat soap. And it smells really good. It's not scented. It just smells like a nice soap. So um, I want to use this, but also I don't want to because it's so special. I just want to look at it. I don't want to use it up. I need to get over it. I need to just use it. Soap is soap and I should use it. So uh, I got soap at Carrie Wallen Mills. I also uh, got a Lanonin salve. So I actually got, full disclosure, I got two soaps and I got two salves for this uh, cryptic giveaway that I've been teasing that has yet to happen. I need to get my ducks in a row and then it will happen, okay? Just wait till my ducks are in a row and we'll get it going. Uh, but I did get a lanon and salve for me and one for um, a lucky friend who wins the giveaway if I ever get my ducks in a row. I also got this cute little lamb pin. It's like a little uh, lamb uh, silhouette with yarn wrapped around it. And on the back, there is the mechanism to pin it to your clothes. Um, I picked this purely based on color, not functionality, because I think this pin is broken. I don't think I... I need to like bend it back into place. I think I smushed it somewhere along the way. Um, but once I figure that out, uh, that'll be good. It'll be cute on my uh, purple iris sweater once that is made. So I've got the magnet, the salve, the pin, the soap. And I think that might be all that I got at Carrie Wallen Mills. Oh no, I also got a pair of wool socks. I got these for DJ because like I mentioned, he had opted to stay at the hotel and explore around Killarney while we were off adventuring. So I got him a pair of wool socks so he could like check that off his list. Like, yeah, I've been to Carrie Wallen Mills or like I have a piece of Carrie Wallen Mills. So uh, that is my haul from Carrie Wallen Mills. Oh, another thing I want to say about Carrie Wallen Mills is they have 
the friendliest dog. I think she's a golden retriever. She's like a very, she's like a cream colored dog. And uh, she's so friendly. When we got there, she like trotted around the gate and was so excited to have new friends to play with. And get this, her name is Millie. And she is the Carrie Woolen Mills dog. Her name is Millie. That's perfect. That's incredibly perfect. So hats off to Carrie Woolen Mills for finding the perfect name for the perfect dog in the perfect place. And thank you so much for having us. All right, after we finish up at Carrie Woolen Mills, we spent a lot of time at Carrie Woolen Mills. I think longer than Jane anticipated we would. Uh, uh, I think Jane was learning more and more that we needed more time than was normal <laughs> to shop at the yarn uh yarn places like we spent hours hours shopping for yarn if you added up all the time we spent shopping for yarn it it yeah yeah so anyway we spent a lot of time at Carrie Willen Mills just purchasing our treasures people had a lot sent home sweaters blankets scarves yarn soap the whole nine yards okay so we spent a good amount of time then we got back on the bus oh I should say for this day, we weren't on our regular bus. So as you know, we've been uh, riding the large coach and John is our driver. We learned that Ireland has very strict laws of how many consecutive hours drivers can work. So John was due for time off. So he took, I think, 24 hours off. So on Saturday, we had a different driver. I believe his name was Colum, and we had a smaller bus. And this was fine because not everyone uh, chose to participate in this day of activities. So we didn't have our full number of tour participants with us. And we were going to be driving on some very um, rural roads. So it was important that uh, we could like you know, not be stranded. So the large coach was just not, was just not the coach for us on this day. So we were on a smaller bus and it was no problem because we only had our like purses and our project bags as opposed to all of our luggage and all of our uh, people on the bus with us. So we got back on the coach and we headed to the next destination, which was the cutest little Irish town. This was the town of Kenmare. We didn't have a whole ton of time to explore Kenmare. Uh, we had about an hour, so some people split off and went to find food. I was on my own, um, not like alone, but in the sense that I like wasn't going with a group to get food. I wasn't going with a group to go to a particular store. So um, I crossed paths with a lot of people um, as I was poking around Ken Mare. But uh, as with many others, I started in the Weavers of Ireland store. This is a store that I think is a franchise around Ireland. So this was not the only location that I had seen. I had seen one in Dublin. Um, but it was right there on the corner where we had parked. So popped in there first. And as soon as I walked in, I saw a uh, a corner full of yarn. That was awesome. Leslie mentioned this in her Ireland recap video of how cool it was to go into a store and just have yarn there. And I want to echo that. This was amazing. I don't have a local yarn store that is convenient for me to visit. So to go into a store and see that there were baskets of yarn, 100% wool, beautiful yarn, that was a magical moment. It felt like we were truly in uh, paradise. It was awesome. So I got a few skeins. I'll show you what I got. I got these two skeins. Um, these are the um, uh, Atlantic Coast Yarns spun in Ireland and they're 100% wool, 164 yards per 100 grams. This one is a pretty deep green, and this one is a fun purple with hints of blue and pink in it that you can see if you look closely to the spin, the fibers kind of um, cover a few different colors. So really pretty skeins. Okay, so I got those skeins at Weavers of Ireland. I also got this air freshener. This is like a little, um, sachet bag and it has it looks like a bar of soap but there's also like 
herbs in it. This scent is cedarwood and jasmine. It smells really, really good. So I think I'm going to hang this on my yarn wall. It's called a fragrant soy wax aroma tablet handmade in West Cork, Ireland by Amber Therapies. So I think Leslie got one of these too. She got a different scent. Um, I smelled them all and this is the one I like the best. So mm, I got that and it's actually imprinted with the moon, uh, which I'm all about. I initially wanted to write my dissertation on the moon in Jane Eyre and it since expanded from that idea, but um, Mm, I'm a moon girl. So and it smells really good. Got that at Weavers of Ireland. Also at Weavers of Ireland, I noticed these uh, fuchsia drawer liners. So they're lavender scented. They also had an ocean scent, which kind of smelled like a fresh sea breeze kind of. Um, but I went with lavender. Uh, and I haven't really opened these up fully. But they're drawer liners that are scented. So I'm going to use these for storing my knits. I think that's perfect. So the lavender, I think, will help protect them. It folds out this really pretty paper with fuchsia artwork on it. I just love fuchsia. You know what? I think this would be beautiful wallpaper. That's gorgeous. So I love my little drawer liners. And next to, let me put this up without, so you don't have to listen to the crinkling. Next to the drawer liners, there were these uh, lavender sachets. So these also have that fuchsia flower artwork on them. And there are... How many sachets in here? Let's open this up. I haven't opened it up yet to see. Oh, it's just one sachet. Oh, interesting. So this is just one. It's just one thing that you hang up. So it's lavender scented sachet and it, um, it has fuchsia on it. Man, I wish I had realized that this was only one sachet because this was six euros and this was 12.95 and this has six drawer liners and this is only one sachet so i should have invested in more drawer liners i think than the sachet but you live and learn i got a few different sachets i got one sachet for a giveaway and one sachet for me so there you go. That's what I got at Weavers of Ireland. Then I went to Quills. This is another souvenir shop. This was across the street from Weavers of Ireland. And I got um, three postcards. They're all the same. They were like three for one euro. So, um, or three for two euro, I should say. Three for two euro. And I got this print because there's fuchsia flowers on the map. Okay, so I'm a sucker for fuchsia. So I've got yarn from Weavers of Ireland, fuchsia drawer liner and sachet from Weavers of Ireland, fuchsia postcard from Quills, and then I made my way up the high street of Kenmare and visited the White Room, and I got this. A uh, Irish linen sachet with a fuchsia flower embroidered on it. I wasn't really sure what to use this for because I don't want to use it like in daily use and get it all gunky and grimy. I want it to stay beautiful and perfect forever. I was talking to Leslie about my options and she recommended I just fill it with lavender or maybe rosemary and then put it somewhere I can see it and enjoy it. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so basically, uh, it was not planned this way, but I'm so happy it ended up this way. My visit around Ken Mare was like my fuchsia flower souvenir day. Super happy with that. Um, 
Uh, but again, our time in Ken Mare was short, so I got those fuchsia treasures, and then um, other people got their souvenirs. We got back on the bus, and we headed to our workshop with Liz Spillane. Now, at the beginning of today's recap, I mentioned that there were activities both for our knitting participants and our non-knitting participants, and this is where that comes into play. Liz Spillane lives in a beautiful passive house. She and her partner built this house together. So basically, as they described it to us, what that means is the house does not have um, like a negative environmental impact, it's neutral. I don't really remember the details of that, but I've heard this before um, about housing. I think it's a really cool idea. And the house was really light and airy and lots of natural elements. Her partner is a woodworker and uh, there were touches from both of their talents and expertise all throughout the house. That was cool to see. So while at the Spillane's home, the knitting participants went with Liz and the non-knitting participants went with her partner and the knitting participants learned um, about making fingerless mittens, which I'll tell you about in a minute. And the non-knitting participants got to make a charcuterie board in the woodworking workshop. So that was cool. Um, uh, everybody got to leave with something. So I, of course, went to the knitting workshop, so I know more about that, so I'll speak mostly to that. We went into this room where there were tables set up for us to sit and knit at, and at each table, each seat at the tables, there was a paper bag. Inside the paper bag were two balls of Carrie Woolen Mills yarn, so that was cool. We had just come from Carrie Woolen Mills, and now we get to work up some yarn. Um, so two balls of Carrie Woolen Mills yarn, a pattern for fingerless mitts, and a small rectangular piece of wood. Liz also had a basket of uh, Carrie Woolen Mills yarn. So if we didn't love the color that was in our paper bag, we could swap it out. I wanted to swap out and get a more purple color. So I did that from her basket and I grabbed two balls of this pink purple color. Um, yeah, so I'm happy that I made the switch because my Mobius knitting cowl was a neutral color and I wanted to have um, a, a different pop of color for my uh, additional workshops. So Liz showed us at the beginning of the workshop what we would be making. She showed us her sample fingerless mitts and I finished mine, so I'll show you mine. These are fingerless mittens. Uh, they have a cable pattern. They are knit flat, and then they're finished off with this art yarn, textured yarn. This is the textured yarn that I made. I still have a ton left over, so I could make another pair of mittens. Maybe I will. So basically how this worked was a few at a time, Liz would invite us to a separate area of that work craft section of her home. This is where a bunch of yarn was on this table in cone form, all sorts of colors, all sorts of textures, all sorts of weights, all sorts of spins, like some were single ply, some were uh, multiple ply, you get the idea. There's like tinsel, there's everything, all sorts of things. And you could pick whatever colors and textures and weights you liked. You'd gather them up, put them on the ground and wind them together into a ball. And you wanted the ball to be about the same size as um, your Carrie Woolen Mills ball. Mine is obviously offset now because I've knit a lot from the Carrie Woolen Mills ball. Um, and then you make this art yarn. So the way that you do this is once you have your yarn wound up into a ball, and you could do this with whatever yarn you like at your house, easy to do at home. You wrap it around the rectangular piece of wood. I think it's maybe like three inches long. So you wrap it around a couple times. You cut the yarn um, based on that length, about three inch sections. You don't need a piece of wood to do this. You can just cut three inch sections. Um, and then when you get done with the cable pattern on the mitten and you're working on the cuff, you tie a knot of your three inch 
art yarn around your working yarn and you slide it in between your knit stitches every other stitch. So there's a knot of this art yarn between each of my stitches on the cuff. This is the most labor intensive part of the knitting process. It takes a long time um, to tie the knots and tie enough and then cut more sections of the art yarn. So I didn't like that part of the process because I'm an impatient person, okay? Uh, but I like the end result. And I will say that a lot of the knitting participants you are kind of haters about these mittens, okay? Some people were like, I don't know when I'm gonna wear those. I just don't know if that's for me. I like the pattern, but not with the art yarn. And I was like, I'm making them with the art yarn because this is a, this is a once in a lifetime experience and I wanna make the most of it. And if I find afterwards that I don't enjoy it, okay, great. I still have that experience in my toolbox of life. Uh, but guess what? I have worn these in real life. I wore them in Dublin when we went on the Guinness tour because I finished these the last day of the tour, um, which I'll tell you about more. Um, but yeah, I finished these on the tour. I wore them on the tour and you're not going to believe this, but I wore these in real life in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. One morning when I was going to work, it was cold. <laughs> I can't stop showing you these. One morning it was cold. I wore them. I have no regrets. Yeah, they're a little weird. Yeah, they're a little out there. But do you not need a little out there accessory every now and then? Can't say you don't, can you? So uh, I'm glad that I made these. Some people opted to make these without the art yarn. They're going to use the art yarn for something else. Uh, more power to you. Do what works for you. It worked for me to do these, and I'm really happy with the result. So, so I'm happy 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 that I did it um but I didn't like like the labor of tying the knots that was annoying uh, but yeah that was the workshop with Liz Spillane we did break halfway through and the woodworking people came back to the house we left the knitting area and we all had homemade desserts and tea and coffee that Liz had made for us and then after we enjoyed our refreshments, we went back to our respective workshop areas and we finished our um, our activities. So they finished making their charcuterie board. We continued working on our mittens and it was a good time had by all. Uh, the Spillane's house has beautiful views. Uh, it's, it's incredibly beautiful. And I think their house is on Airbnb. So if you ever wanna check it out for yourself, check out their Airbnb listing. If I can find it, I'll put it in the video box description video description box. Yes. So after several hours at the Spillane's working on our charcuterie boards, working on our mittens, we got back on the coach and we made our way back to the Lake Hotel for um, an evening there. On the way, Liz, in her infinite wisdom, had Column stop at a beautiful photo spot. I think this was I think she said it was Ladies View, but then I saw a sign later on for Ladies View. So I don't know if we actually stopped at Ladies View or we stopped somewhere near Ladies View, but it doesn't matter because it was gorgeous. It was really, really beautiful. Um, just like a panoramic outlook of Killarney National Park. Uh, and it was gorgeous. We got some fun photo ops there. Um, and also, since we were going back to the Lake Hotel through Killarney National Park, park. Did I say forest earlier? I'm not sure if it's Killarney National Forest or National Park, but the national something of Killarney. We finally got to see what I had been hoping to see the whole time, which was sheep in the road. That was magical. That was great. Uh, you never would think that having something obstruct your path would be magical, but when you're in Ireland and it's a sheep doing it, your whole world stops. Finally got back to the Lake Hotel Several people had booked tickets to go see a Celtic step show that night. I personally didn't go, so I can't speak to it, but everyone who did go that I spoke to loved it and it was a fun experience for them. So I think I'll check that out next time if we are in the area when there's such a show. Um, but for those of us who stayed at the hotel, at least for me and DJ, we had dinner, we relaxed, and we kind of... Uh, re-upped our energy stores because it's a lot 
It's a lot that you're doing, even though everything is so fun, so enriching, so memorable, so magical, it still takes a physical and mental toll. So it was nice to be able to just chill out in the hotel room and take a breather. So that's how I ended day six, Saturday, October 14th. It was a long day, a magical day. Um, and now we're at day seven, Sunday, October 15th. We're still at the Lake Hotel in Killarney. Today on Sunday, October 15th, it is a chill day. Not a lot is scheduled. Um, but we do have a few itinerary items. The first, of course, being breakfast. So heading down to eat breakfast from 7.30 on. Uh, so again, the Lake Hotel breakfast was incredible. Good food, good views, good company, good all around. So had breakfast and then for the knitting participants, we had our final workshop of the tour on this day. This was a workshop with Carol Feller, who is an Irish knitwear designer, and she taught us about garment shaping, about cabling. She showed people how to uh, cable without a cable needle, which was cool. I was so tired during this workshop that I didn't really knit. <laughs> Like I, I didn't really uh, like practice cabling without a cable needle. I was just so, so tired. Um, so for me, it was just nice to sit and listen to the things Carol was teaching us. She taught us about some of the history of Irish wool and Irish textiles. This is information that we had um, heard from Vaughn Corrigan our first night. We heard more at Cushendale Woolen Mills and a little bit more at Kerry Woolen Mills. So the things that Carol was sharing with us uh, uh, wasn't necessarily new information, but it was nice to sit and listen all the same. So uh, I wasn't really actively knitting. A lot of people were knitting during the workshop. Uh, Carol gave us yarn to work with and some patterns to work with. So I'll show you that. So for each of the knitters at our um, respective seats, there was a cake of yarn. And this is uh, Stolen Stitches Yarn, which is Carol Feller's brand. So the label says Stolen Stitches by Carol Feller, yarn by Carol Feller. This particular yarn is called Nua Worsted, and it is 60% merino wool, 20% yak, and 20% linen. So there's all sorts of different colors that were dispersed um, for the seats around the room. I had a green cake at my seat and I was happy to have green. So I, I didn't swap, I don't think. I think this is what originally was at my seat. Um, but those little white uh, fibers, those are the linen fibers in this blend. So it looks almost heathered um, and that's due to the linen fibers. This is really, really soft yarn. And this was provided for us to make one of two patterns that Carol uh, had printed out. So yes, this was a cable class. So Carol had these really nicely um, manufactured uh, little booklets with two different patterns. So there is a pattern for this coffee cozy that you see pictured on the front of this a booklet and then there was also a pattern for um, what's called the Peter Swell mitts and you can see those here. If you want to learn more about the Peter Swell mitts you can check out Leslie's latest podcast. She goes over her finished object Peter Swell mitts in that. Um, so we had the pattern for two different cabled projects to make with Nua Worsted during the workshop. It was um, up to us which one we did. And then we also were gifted this book. This is called Cozy Knits. And this is full of nine, it says nine stunning designs in Nua Worsted. So these are not all designed by Carol Feller, but they're all knit up in Carol Feller's yarn, Nua Worsted. So there are sweaters, shawls, and I, I want to say there's a hat in here. Yeah, there are hats too. So nine different patterns. Not all of the sweaters are size inclusive. Um, and this is something that I um, asked Carol Feller about, and it was an interesting conversation. Uh, but 
uh, yeah, if you are looking to purchase this, keep in mind that not all the sweater patterns are size inclusive. Uh, but we had the Cozy Knit book, the two pattern uh, pamphlet for cables, and then a cake of Nua Worsted. And also halfway through the workshop, we kind of took a break from the instruction and we had the opportunity to shop the yarn that Carol had brought with her. So I took advantage of that opportunity. I got um, a tote bag that says, you'll find me knitting. This I actually ended up using as kind of my purse on the trip home. Not this exact bag, but another one that I bought. I bought this for a giveaway. Okay, I'm getting to it. Um, so I got that. And then I also got uh, it in a drawstring bag version as a project bag. They both say, you'll find me knitting. And then I purchased a skein of Nua Worsted in the colorway, or this is Nua Sport, and this is in the colorway Figment. So it's a pretty purple Nua Worsted colorway. I really like how those linen fibers show up on that dark, dark purple. So here's what it looks like compared to the green. So Nua Worsted in the green and Nua Sport in the purple. So that's how the knitting participants spent our morning learning from Carol Feller, knitting together, enjoying tea, coffee, shortbread cookies, and chocolate chip cookies, I think. Um, the shortbread cookies brought me back to life. I was so tired this day. I was so, so tired. I could not, I could not figure out uh, which of the carafes was tea and which was coffee. That's how tired I was, uh, but the shortbread cookies really helped. Okay, wardrobe change. Um, full disclosure, uh, all the footage from uh, so far in the video of me talking is from yesterday, but yesterday I kind of hit a wall. I got overwhelmed. There's just so much to go over, so I took a break, and here we are the next day, and uh, that's why I'm wearing different clothes. I don't have my hat on, and uh, yeah. All right, so kind of picking up where we left off, but also rewinding a little bit. There's also these two skeins that I purchased from Carol Feller that I forgot to show you when I was filming yesterday. So uh, these are some really hardy, uh, nice skeins. This is the Diaz color from Carol Feller, which is 80%, uh, 86% merino wool. 14% mohair and it's spun by Donegal Yarns. This is in the color Barrow. It's a really pretty blue. This is going to Philadelphia to live with my friend Rachel. And I also got this skein of Blasta, Blasta, Blasta wool um, from Carol Feller. This is 60% fine Irish wool, 40% New Zealand wool. And again, this is also spun by Donegal Yarns. Uh, and this I got for the hoofs and details of the tea room lamb that I'm making with my sister Ellie. In part one, I mentioned uh, that we're making matching lamb stuffies with yarn from Cushendale Woolen Mills. And I'm going to use this for the hooves on mine. And Ellie, if you're watching, I will uh, give you leftovers so you can have matching hooves if you so desire. So also got these two skeins from uh, Carol Feller during the workshop. All right, so now we have uh, officially uh, ended the recap of the workshop. Again, nice company, nice coffee, nice tea, nice cookies, nice uh, environment, and the rest of the day was ours to make whatever we wanted it. So some people went on hikes, other people went on scenic walks. I stayed at the hotel and knit. I think uh, Leslie was with me most of the day as well, knitting away, and we just kind of took it easy. DJ climbed the highest peak in Ireland, which wasn't too far from the Lake Hotel. He has some cool footage of that hike if you want to check out his Instagram. His Instagram handle is runbtr. So after the day of adventuring uh, around Killarney, depending on what people chose or, you know, chilling at the hotel, as in my case, that brings us to the next day, day eight of the tour, Monday, October 16th. This is another day where we are transitioning from location 
into location. So we started the day with breakfast at the Lake Hotel and then got on the coach to make our way back to Dublin. Uh, but we had some fun stops along the way. The first activity we had on day eight was a jaunting car ride, which is essentially a horse carriage ride. So we were separated into two, was it two or three? I think two carriages. It might have been three. I don't quite remember. Uh, but we were separated into different groups and we got into these carriages, uh, our horse and buggies, uh, situations, jaunting cars. Okay. And we had a little tour of Killarney National Park. So our tour guide taking us through Killarney National Park in this jaunting car was able to narrate for us a lot of the sites we were seeing, history of the park. Um, we got to see some of the deer that are resident to the park and we ended the tour at Ross Castle. Ross Castle is really beautiful. It sits on the edge of one of the lakes in the Killarney National Park, surrounded by just beautiful scenery. This is another place that I had been when I visited Ireland in 2014, and that was probably, without a doubt, the most exciting and magical thing that my parents and my younger sister and I did on our trip is exploring the National Park and riding um, on a boat tour called Gap of Dunlow Boat Tours from the Gap of Dunlow to Ross Castle. So it was nice to go back to Ross Castle, this time actually walk around the castle grounds, which is not something that I had been able to do uh, back in 2014. So we walked around the grounds, DJ got uh, a hot chocolate or a coffee, some hot beverage, and a snack at the little coffee cart, and just enjoyed the sights. It was really pretty. It was nice to have a calm, you know, slow pace. We're really tired at this point, um, but we get to sit in a jaunting car and then poke around an old castle. What could be better than that? So we enjoyed uh, Ross Castle. And then we got back on the coach and continued onward in our journey to Dublin, stopping in the little village of Adair. So Adair is this really cute little little village and we got to poke around, walk around. Um, I got a souvenir there. I got this little purple yarn wrapped lamb. So this is similar to the pin that I got at Carrie Woolen Mills, except it's a little bigger and there is no pin uh, mechanic on either side of it. So this is like a little desk ornament, which is exactly what I plan to use it as. Or I might rest it on one of my picture frames back here if they're wide enough to support uh, such an item. But I just thought it was a little cute. And uh, as you may have noticed, I'm on a purple rampage. So got this in a dare. But there's one more stop between Adair and Dublin, which is the National Stud and Japanese Gardens. The weather was perfect. We got to walk around the grounds, see these beautiful horses, and then we ended at the Japanese garden section of the property and walk through that. I don't think I've ever really been to a Japanese garden, so it wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting just like a botanical garden, basically, but it's more like... Um, like a journey that you go on throughout the different sections of the botanical garden. So that was nice. It was very scenic uh, and uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed both the stud section and the garden section. Very educational and interesting. So we did that and then we got back on the coach and finished the leg of the journey that would bring us to Dublin. We arrived at our hotel in the evening, Brooks Hotel in the Dublin city center. The Brooks Hotel was probably the most hustly and bustly of the hotels we stayed in um, just because of its proximity to the hustle and bustle of the Dublin city center. So that was nice for those of um, the tour participants who preferred pr close proximity to pubs and, and shops and things like that. And once we got there and we got settled in, a lot of us went to dinner together at a pub called the Harry Lemon, which was just at the end of the block, basically, that the Brooks Hotel um, is on. Uh, then we headed back to the Brooks Hotel, got a good night's sleep, and we're up the next day for day nine of the tour. This is the last, you know, uh, 
official day of the tour or last day where we have itinerary items planned. This is Tuesday, October 17th. So start the day with breakfast and then we get on the coach to go to Sandra Coots craft studio called Crafts of Ireland. Sandra's studio is in County Cabin, which is about two hours outside of Dublin. So it's going to be a long-ish coach ride um, to and from the Crafts of Ireland studio. So we had a smaller group for this excursion, which was totally understandable. Um, not everyone was interested in spending four hours on the coach this day. Keep in mind, we had spent a considerable amount of time on the coach the day prior getting from Killarney to Dublin. And then most of us were gearing up for a really long traveling day the following day going from Dublin to the US. So totally understandable. The people who chose not to participate uh, decided to see some sites around Dublin that they had been wanting to see but hadn't had the chance to see yet. So uh, it was fulfilling for everyone. Um, as far as I know. Uh, but those of us who did go on the coach were myself, my mom, Leslie, Ella, Kathleen, and Tina, and of course, Jane joined us. So we got to the Crafts of Ireland studio, and this is like my dream house, my dream place, my dream my dream because you walk into the crafts of ireland studio and it there's a kitchen and there are um tables spread out throughout this large room there are two old cars i think at least one is a model t i think that is sandra's husband's passion and sandra's passion is fiber crafts and traditional uh crafts of ireland so it was just a really cool space there's all this old timey stuff old chairs, old china, old furniture. And if you have been watching my videos, you know by now that I love old things. I think they're so, so cool and powerful and awesome and go old stuff. So there was old stuff there, which I loved. I love just looking around and seeing all this history that's just like casually around this giant room. So I would love to have a home um, uh, with a great room full of old stuff one day. So uh, I loved seeing that area. And then Sandra took us to this area towards the back of the building, which is essentially her craft space. And she does it all. There was a drum carter, there's a spinning wheel, there were multiple antique circular sock machines. She had a sewing machine set up, she had needle felting, she showed us how she extracts linen fibers, um, it's just like amazing. She does it all. She dyes, she embroiders, she needle felts, she crochets, she cross stitches, she sews, she spins, she weaves, she does it all. And it really inspired me. Like I was looking at Facebook Marketplace for a rigid heddle. Um, I was talking to Tina about how to get into spinning. She is, she throughout the trip had been trying to convince me of the value of getting an e-spinner. And I have since purchased an e-spinner. It's supposed to come tomorrow. Um, but anyway, being at Sandra Coots studio, Crafts of Ireland studio was an incredible experience because it felt validating to see someone who has this passion for so many different art forms. You don't have to just knit. You don't have to just crochet. You don't have to just sew, weave, dye, spin, whatever. You can do it all. And Sandra Coot is proof of this. So I really enjoyed uh, seeing that and like, I don't know, daydreaming of what my craft space could one day be like. I'm basically wanting to emulate Sandra Coot's craft space because it was incredible. Imagine having so many circular sock machines that you can play favorites. What? That's incredible to imagine. And I hope to achieve that one day. Um, so that was really fun. Then after we kind of poked around the craft studio, we didn't necessarily do any crafts, but we learned about all the crafts she does. And Jane went through with us. Jane was amazed. Typically for uh, different uh, itinerary items, Jane has hung back and uh, like made phone calls, make sure that everything's in order for our next stop. But we're at the end of the tour and we're a smaller group. So Jane was like, yeah, I'm going to learn about this stuff too. So she went through with us and like, I loved it because 
at this point I'm like I want to spend every waking moment with Jane because she's so cool so I was really glad that Jane came with us and also like participated with us that was very special for me uh, but after we spent some time in the craft space we went back out to the great room with all those tables and chairs in the kitchen area and Sandra showed us how to make butter this was very cool she showed us how you would make butter uh, before you stand mixers basically she had uh the mechanics for that a jar with like a a crank that you wind but she showed us how to make butter with a stand mixer which i plan to do i actually have the heavy whipping cream in my fridge right now i have the butter pats that i ordered off amazon immediately upon my return to the u.s so i just need uh uh the the like motivation to make it happen. The heavy whipping cream is good until December. So I can sit on it for a little while and I don't need to do it right away, but I am gonna make my own butter. It was really cool to see that from start to finish. And then we got to enjoy it. Sandra had made two loaves of homemade traditional Irish bread for us to enjoy once we arrived it was freshly baked so we got to smell it our whole time that we were there and then uh at the end of our time there we got to eat it up with that fresh homemade butter that we had watched sandra make so it was awesome and i totally understand and validate why not everyone chose to come on this excursion but also you missed out you really did. It was so awesome. It was so cool. I think it was one of the coolest parts of the entire trip, in my opinion. And I think that on future knitting tours, we'll definitely incorporate visiting Sandra Coots studio again, maybe having a workshop or something. We'll have to figure out what we can make happen. But it was incredible. Uh, the the scenery was beautiful. She has some sheep that you can watch outside the window. Like imagine having your knitting spot being next to a picture window and you've just got a flock of sheep outside the window keeping you company while you're knitting. That is the peak experience. So uh, again, something to strive for. Also in part one of the Irish Knitting Tour recap, I mentioned to you that there was this bag at Christ Church Cathedral that I was very interested in, but I didn't have time to purchase it. So when I was at the Sandra Coots Crafts of Ireland studio, I gave DJ a task to go visit the Christ Church Cathedral because he was staying in Dublin and get me the bag. So he went back and he got one for me and one for my mom. And is this not just the perfect proje project bag? It um, is a zipper bag, so I'm gonna be extra careful, but there's also a zipper pocket on the inside. So this will be perfect for those must have notions. This is a great size project bag for like a hat or a shawl. I was using it for my simple thing shawl, which I've since finished. Um, that I'll show you in an upcoming video, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, here is the coveted bag. Only 12 euros. Can you believe it? I think it's intended to be a makeup bag or like a toiletry bag or something, but I'm sorry, no, this is a project bag and that's final. Okay, so after our small group was done eating all of Sandra's butter and all of Sandra's bread and learning about all of Sandra's talents, we got back on the bus and we headed to Dublin. The next item on the itinerary was the Guinness Storehouse Tour. So we went back to the Brooks Hotel, we picked up the people who were wanting to go to Guinness and we headed to Guinness. So after the Guinness Tour, wrapped up we got back on the coach and we headed back to the brooks hotel where we freshened up for dinner and then walked together to the dolita restaurant this is an italian restaurant in dublin and it's our farewell dinner so our final dinner together and this is included in the tour uh, the nolita restaurant the food was really good i got this mussel pasta uh, which I enjoyed. Leslie bought me a glass of wine, so I enjoyed that with the wine, and um, I gave a little speech at the end. Jane gave a speech that I missed because I was in the bathroom, but someone recorded it and I got to watch it. Basically, she said, come back soon, and she had a great time. It's hard for me to articulate and to fully 
express to you how wonderful Jane is. I will never forget Jane. I will cherish Jane until the day I die, even if I never see her again. Although I really hope I do. I really hope that she's available to be our tour guide on every single future tour. I'm sure if we have someone else, they'll be equally amazing and wonderful. But I, I just, I, I cannot tell you how amazing Jane is. She is so, so wonderful. I just can't, I just cannot express to you. I want to make it so clear so you'll understand, but it's impossible. You just have to take my word for it. Jane is incredible. I wish Jane every happiness in the world and I hope that I see her again soon. Jane, I don't know if you're watching this, but I hope, I hope you know that we're so grateful for, for, for you and all the work you did. And, uh, you 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 made the tour what it was and i'm so eternally eternally in your debt um but enough of that mushy stuff so thus ends the tour thank you for sticking it out three whole parts of recaps and long videos at that i don't really have the words to adequately express my gratitude that this trip came about uh it never would have come about without your support and without your investment in me and your care for me. So I'm just grateful to every single one of you. Um, so thank you. I'm, I'm really, really eternally grateful to you and I can't wait to see um, what happens next on this fun little journey of fiber shenanigans on the internet. So we'll see what happens next. My mom and I are in conversation with Knitting Tours, planning the next knitting tour. So keep your eyes peeled and your ears open for updates on that. I will be updating probably first on Instagram and uh, also on YouTube once I get around to it. If you uh, have been around for a while, you may notice that I'm like really quick on the draw for Instagram, but YouTube takes me a little bit longer. I don't know what it is, if it's just a mental block or what, but that's just the state of things as it is now. So with all that said, thank you so much again for watching and thank you for your support um, with the Irish Knitting Tour and all that went into making it the success that it was. At least I feel like it was a success. It was a success for me. I loved the trip. I loved the friendships that I made. And I miss you all if you're watching this and you're on the Irish Knitting Tour. Know that I think about you every day <laughs> and it was just the most magical time. So yeah. I, I, I'll I stop now before I just ramble into oblivion, but I'm just so grateful and I hope that is uh, adequately communicated through the screen from me to you. So thank you. Um, yeah, I'll end it there. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you don't already and hit that notification bell if you want to be notified of my next upload. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.